Hey, how we doing? We are live. Hopefully everybody is doing well. I have a page of notes. I don't write notes very often, but I do have, uh, I should say notes for a live show. I do have a lot of stuff written on the tablet. It's all related to issues, concerns, um, talking to hundreds of people. And I do mean hundreds of people, whether it be back and forth, Instagram, Facebook, uh, lots of Patreons. Um, and then some folks from here as well. People have reached out to my email. So there's like five or six ways that I've been uh, conversing with people, including some direct um, text messages as well, too. Um, there's a lot going on. And there's a lot of stuff going on in the country, too. So one thing I just want to stress out, some of our biggest customers are, are the majority of purchases come from one state. And one state alone covers, like, in some people's stores, 20 or 30% of their sales. In that state, it's California. California has power, roving power outages, storms, fires, and the whole work's going on. Of course, we pray for them. Hopefully, everything works out okay with the issues going on. It's not a good situation at all. So even if it's a couple million people without electricity, you got to think they're probably staying with family members. So you got another you know, million or so people that could be affected as well, too. So I'm taking that into account on whatever I'm doing with, with sales and stuff like that. Now, we had a slump after eBay did the, the changeover, like most people did. We did some things, and the slump is gone. Again, I don't get as much of my income from eBay anymore. My goal these days is a lump sum number. So if I sell on nine different platforms, which is what we do, my end result, my month end figures are based on all of those combined. So I don't as much worry about one site anymore as everybody else does. Yeah, eBay is still a very big part of my income, and um, I do worry about that. It, it, very exclusive. Again, this is all I do. We do online sales. It's all I do is sell stuff online for our entire um, income for everything that I make and everything I use to pay for my kids' health and well-being, my wife, me, our vehicles, our, our house, uh, business, storage buildings, all that kind of stuff comes from every dime that we get in from online. So I'm fully invested in this. So I'm not making light of any issues whatsoever, but there are some circumstances going on. The economy isn't looking good. Now, I know somebody's going to dart at me and say that's not true. It's looking great if you've got stocks and you have the money and invest it and you own multiple houses. You guys are doing great. That's that's a fact. And again, there's nothing wrong with having houses and money, a lot of money, as long as you work for it in my book. I, I'm not one to think that everybody should inherit it and that's fine and dandy. I don't I earned all my money. I didn't didn't get a dime from family or anything like that. Zero. Honestly, I haven't received a dime. I don't ask for anything. I don't get anything. It's not my goals. So I work for everything that I get. So I I, I fully worry when stuff goes on to some extent. This month, I'm not so worried. It, it's a it's a month thing. There's a lot of things going on in California, as I said. So you got to think of all those aspects of it. Things that um going on. We all know payments. You're not getting paid like you're supposed to with the new payment system. Now, I looked into it, and that fully looks to be a correct uh, assessment of what's going on with eBay payments. People just aren't getting paid in time. Ten days they've held up in blaming it on third-party apps. Now, or third-party vendors, whatever they want to call it. Um, my take on that is that the processing company who's been who eBay's is using has been doing this with Etsy for a very long time, and Etsy doesn't have these issues. So it's obviously some sort of issue going through, in my opinion, again, opinion, through eBay somewhere. Because again, eBay's now having issues where I get notices saying they couldn't pay with PayPal, you know, and all these other issues. Now, some of those emails coming in saying they can't pay could just be their account or, you know, they don't have enough money or there's not a charge card tied to their 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 PayPal account. So there's a lot to it. I'll get to some questions and some things too here. I've got some recommendations. I've got what I've already looked into. I've been looking into this for a little while. Um, obviously, you know, I put out some videos about this and what's going on. So this all seems to have happened around the 12th and eBay has admitted that's when the rollout came on. So you, you take it for granted, whatever you want. My opinion is whatever they did to restructure the database, obviously messed up the database. Um, 
links and all kinds of things. They didn't test it. That, that's that's the point. I would have tested something massive like this for a couple of, not like 90 days in a closed system somewhere to make sure it worked, you know, with fake items, do a dummy site or something. I mean, this is something that major players do. They invest a lot of money into research and development, you know, R&D. It's, it's just something that big companies should really do. So again, I, I can't say what the issue is because there's so many different things they could have done wrong. We know what happened last year in June. All the photos disappeared. I'm, I'm not going to turn this into just a dog and on eBay thing either. That's not my goal at all. I, I'm more concerned for those people who contacted me and it's getting to be a lot these days. I've get a lot of people contacting you, people totally upset. They don't know how they're going to make ends meet. They don't know how they're going to feed their kids. eBay tells everybody then they, when they call that there's nothing wrong with their store. And I got confirmation of that from like 20 people that that's what they're telling everybody. Um, now, I've also had people tell me that eBay's telling them to you know end your listings and sell similar and that will give you a new item number. Yeah, I've talked about that. I know that gives you a new item number, but you lose any watchers. You also lose any chance of ranking that item because it's not going to rank on Google. Google rank takes 60 days at least on average. If you just list an item, it's not going to show up in a search on, on Chrome for a long time. There's billions of things to look for. How in that world would you expect it to rank you and get you up there right after you list it? This just doesn't work that way. And again, I'm not trying to criticize anybody or get on to anybody for anything, but we'll be to the, to the, the comments in just a minute here. Um, but the facts of it is it takes a while to rank. And as time goes by, there's so many sites now out there that you can sell on just even what I, I sell in nine places. So, and there's more that I don't even touch. We gave up on Poshmark because I don't want to mess with clothing and stuff. And there's other sites, Ruby Lane, I don't mess with. There's other sites that, that sell similar items as I do. And, you know, I don't mess with them all. So there's probably 15 sites that can give you some income. And I'm not even counting Facebook or Craigslist. So more and more people these days, especially younger millennials and things like that. Um, I'm not sure what generation the the 10 year olds and such forth would be. But a lot of folks just go to Chrome and do a search now for items. They don't know where to go. A lot of, that's, that's another reason why younger folks aren't on eBay very much at all. And eBay doesn't know how to bring them in. Uh, problem again, comparing it to 10 years ago, there was only a few players in the game. eBay was it for collectibles. Um, but nowadays there's just so many choices. Most people aren't even sure where to go, so they're looking more from a Chrome search. In fact, the last report that I saw said more people start at a Chrome or a web browser search to look for whatever they're looking for first and don't even go directly to a site anymore. That's why I'm saying that if you, you do a self-similar, you may get a tiny bump because it's a new listing on there, but if it's still the same item and it's not a great item, it's not going to change anything on eBay. It's just going to kill your chances on on uh, ranking that item. Again, if it's a flooded category, you, you got to do something else. You, you're not going to do much with a flooded category. Um, and again, that's that's just the facts. Anybody will tell you that. I don't care how big or how small a YouTuber is or an uh, a eBayer. If it's a flooded category, we all know it doesn't work. You can't do anything. You can do promotions. You can do free list, uh, free shipping, which I would recommend in flooded categories if if you got no other choice and nothing else going on. I don't do promoted listings at all anymore. I instead of doing promoted listings, we we've stepped up and I'm doing um, offers to watchers. I didn't used to do those at all, and I never do anything much in the winter months. But we're doing them now to compensate for this, and we've also started massively posting out stuff to other platforms, which I wanted to have done by now. And it's just been a long drawn out process. So I'm getting more income now from other places. So if I lose a few bucks on eBay, I'm making almost double that in another spot. And again, Amazon, I do sell collectibles and things like that. I get that question a lot. You must not sell collectibles on Amazon. You must not sell vintage on Amazon. I do. I do sell all of that on Amazon. There is a market for some things on Amazon. In, in Amazon, some vintage items from the 30s and 40s that I sell, and even before that, sell for more money on Amazon than I get on eBay for collectibles. I do sell new items. I do sell books. I do sell... RA items and wholesale items on Amazon. So I don't just play eBay. I don't share that kind of information because the, the option for somebody else to tank their competitors is so easy on Amazon. 
So I don't do that. Anybody who's done Amazon for any length of time knows exactly what I'm talking about. A competitor reports you for um, infringement or trademark violations or something, and they don't even own the trademark, just to get you booted for a few moments so they can go ahead and sell their item. It happens all the time, and Amazon admits it, plus all the other issues that go along with Chinese sellers. And again, there's nothing wrong with Chinese sellers if they're legitimate, but you know, a large number of them aren't, unfortunately, that I've personally seen. Um, I do deal with Alibaba, so I know everybody's going to say, hey, why do you do that? They have the best electronic parts, and we do some electronic things that I don't discuss on here from scratch and do some creations and got some um, utility patent pending and a... Um, a, uh, I've got another patent pending too with my son, something my son's been working on. So it's a needed necessity for some people. The only place I can get certain things is Alibaba. So again, I criticize the nickel and dime Chinese listings on this or any country. I'm, I'm not trying to single out China. I'm not trying to say everybody in China is a bad person because that's not the case at all. We have a couple friends who are from China, uh, China and my son knows several very well that he's went to school with for eight years here and they're very nice. They come to the house and everything. So I, again, I'm not trying to pick on any specific country, but that seems to be where a lot of it comes from. So Again, I know that the flooded categories are still viable for some people, but for most of you, they are not. Um, Ranking-wise, though, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do sell similar. I I couldn't do. How could I do sell similar on seventy thousand listings? I'd have every person in my store or employee-wise doing it for a couple months, and I still would just end up having to deal with something else the minute eBay changes something else again. So it's not a viable option for me in any way, shape, or form. You want to try it, that's fine. If you're not worried about your ranking, that's your call. But I'm more worried about those just going on and, and calling out to Alexa or whatever they're using. Hey, what's this? Where's that? Hey, I want to find this. There's so many people that just go to their phone and, and type in whatever they're looking for. Or um, they might use CC Click. If you know what that is, you probably know what I'm talking about. Um, I don't use that for pricing because it's missing pricing data. But for new stuff up, CC Click does work pretty well. Um, it's like a central locating um, program or site, whatever you want to call it, that pulls up a lot of information from multiple sites. That's that's all that is. There's three or four of those, those apps out there that um, you can use. And I've used some of those in the past. Um, the, the point of it is, though, that more and more people aren't going to eBay to look for the items, nor are they going to the smaller sites or Posh or anything like that. Obviously, there's lovers of every site that will always go to the site first, but more and more young folks, and they're becoming more and more of a majority, leading towards a majority of people, may not even go to a platform to look up items. That, that's the facts of the matter. Ask around. Do some surveys. You can even look on eBay to some extent. Now, I don't think the eBay information that shows you the off-platform works very well, um, in my opinion, because I don't think it's capturing the mobile aspect because of how it works with the towers and all that other stuff. I could be wrong on that. I'm not a, a pro. My IT background's in, in traditional PCs, um, network, um, in, uh, network administration and database design and construction. So I don't know the tower aspect and how all that works out and, and what uh, they're showing, how it pulls up, how they can track that data. So phones are a little different um, for me. I know some of the phone aspects because I did take some safety classes and it did cover phones, the stuff that would be covered on a phone. So, you know, there there's... There's a way to look into that, too. I do believe Am or uh, maybe PayPal maybe even says where... Maybe it's not PayPal. I'll have to look into that. But there, there's other ways to figure it out, too. I've asked people in the past, too, who buy from me, where'd you find my items at? Nothing wrong with doing that. eBay can't really blame you or, or get on you. If it bothers the person, don't ask them. You know, don't get into it. Don't say, I'm sorry, sorry. Um, let's go on to one other thing here. And this is a big one from what I personally... Um, looked into. Now, normally we don't use auctions at all other than to use up the items we just want to blow out and just get rid of old items, a couple year old items up there. But all these issues that are going on now aren't affecting auctions that I can see at all because there's no renewing of a listing. So auctions at this point, I would honestly, in my opinion, would recommend trying out some auctions. You don't have a whole heck of a lot to lose if you have no sales. Um, Price-wise, again, if you end a listing before it's done and then list it another way or relist it, you know, or sell similar, you're going to pay more. So don't do that if you're worried about your fees as well, because another person 
filed some other person's video, and I'm not trying to call any names or anything. Everybody does and says what they want in my book, as long as it's legit information. But they didn't tell these folks, and several people told me this, that they would be billed. And they're newer folks, so they didn't realize that if you relist an item before it's it's time, you're going to pay extra. So their bill went way up, and they were very upset about that. So know the, the amount of money. Know what it's going to cost you. We have stuff set up um, if we want to do that. I've showed you in another video. I think it's um, eBay um, Secrets or something like that. I can't remember. It's just out in the last week or two, a video that I had up. And I'll sh it shows you how to suspend the auto relist on your 30-day good till canceled. You can suspend those. So you can auto relist or not auto relist them. So they'll end after 30 days on the dot. And then you can do whatever you want. Don't end anything early. Don't cancel it. You know, nothing like that. Just go in and check that. It's a little radio button. It's in, um, I think, site preferences. Again, watch the video. It's just from a week or two ago um, about that. And then at the end of 30 days, then do whatever you want. You're at least not going to pay an extra dime for anything other than what you would have normally paid for them auto relisting on a good till cancel. So just end the auto relist aspect of it. That's all you got to do. And it'll stop them at the 30 day mark. And then again, do what you want. I, I won't do the self-similar because I, I can't do that. I'm not going to do promoted listings. Um, and for those of you who are only on eBay, only on one site, I didn't think I would branch out to nine sites. I never thought that would be a need. We, we've done uh, Amazon you know on and off for quite some time and did the book scan and I've done clothes on eBay and all that kind of stuff. Um, I just started the cross-listing in the last couple of years with Amazon just. And then we branched out, and then we branched out, then we branched out. And if you add up all the other platform income coming in, it, it's getting to be a, a decent amount of money. So it's getting to a point where in another year or two, it'll rival what I'm getting off eBay from way it looks, from projections. Again, I project out year, two years, three years, even five years on some aspects. So that's part of, of my plan at this point is to I'll have my own, own store. I'll have Amazon, Walmart for some things, Etsy. Um, Discogs, of course. Um, there's other sites that we use. I use the HIP and the, all those platforms as well, too. So you add up all the other platforms, and that amount of revenue has steadily increased as I broadcast. And as long as you're doing a third-party app to do this, again, a third-party app will cost you money. It will cost you money. It's not a free thing. You have to pay for a service from a... a um, another company to get the third-party app. But, but what the third-party app does is it allows you... Cellbrite's a specific one I've used. Um, Ecom Dash, we got the free promo, so I'm messing with that as well, too. Um, hang on, let me just boot somebody here and report them. Yeah, let's just boot them. Hang on, sorry, folks. There we go. Okay. Um, so that's the gist on that. Kind of sidetracked me there. Sorry about that. Um, totally lost my train of thought. So we will get back into another section. Um, hang on a second here because I've got some notes here and I just want to get over some of the notes. Yeah, um, ranking was, was a big thing that I said. We were talking about not paying to um, end them early and relisting. Um, what eBay is doing in, in some aspects, in my opinion, is going to lead to a ranking of sorts. Uh, and again, they're telling me personally in conference call, video conference call, that they don't want to be Amazon. But obviously, anybody who's watching what's going on can see that they've created this database. They're doing just the way the same setup Amazon is doing. Everything they're doing with these changes and the, like the clothing issue, everybody knows the clothing issue, is the, that, that it's all geared towards Amazon. And at the end of the day, they're going to have, I can't see any other way around it, whether they want to admit it or not. Again, opinion. This is opinion. I didn't get this from, from eBay. They're probably going to have like a buy box coming up because we almost have that now on, on eBay. So branch out. That's that's my biggest, biggest take here. Look at your cost to branch out. Um, Amazon is probably one of the easiest to branch out on, and it's probably the easiest for ease of listing and everything else. It's just a few clicks. It's one page with a bunch of tabs, and you know, once you're on gated and something, I've never been bothered by Amazon again after the the first first time I applied for on gating and anything. 
Again, I'm on gated and collectibles, and I can sell on entertainment collectibles and vintage vinyl. I can sell CDs. I can sell DVDs, used or new, on Amazon. Because, again, you can sell used DVDs in the vintage uh, collectible entertainment section on Amazon. That's where I sell most vintage used DVDs, VHS tapes, and things like that, too. Just FYI. So, I mean... And, and Amazon has other aspects. They are, they're going after other things. They've got Homemade by Amazon, which we are a, a part of. And we're also part of B2B on Amazon, which is a business-to-business -business separate application uh, of, of Amazon. Um, you have to apply. You have to be accepted. You have to fill out some forms to get into that. But it allows me to do wholesale business with other folks directly, whether it means I can buy wholesale or sell wholesale. And there's, there's other stuff that goes along with it. So, I mean, we've really stepped up the game game with this. Again, the 12th of October is the day that all this seems to have happened. I know there's people even in here, the feed, that I, I saw a few posts that they don't know what to do. Try some auctions would be my honest opinion. If you've got a store, you probably have some free listings, um, free auctions, as that would, would say. So look into that. Look into that aspect of it. Try some auctions. I've tried auctions, and they do still go just fine. Again, all the issues that I see are not tied to auctions. They're only tied to the good till canceled. Again, these roving, rotational, constantly flipping over listings that, that carry on the Cassini and everything tied to it, which is, is the way everything works these days. So M or eBay isn't doing anything different, but their handling of it and how it interacts with the database is totally, totally whack. Try looking for something on eBay. And if you pay a lot for promotion, you're going to see a promoted item at the top of a page that has no bearing whatsoever on what, what you're looking for. You're going to see all kinds of stuff at the top of the page that has no bearing on what you're looking for. Like if you're sorting by highest to lowest and stuff, that doesn't even seem to matter. Because again, a promoted listing will be up at the top and it's higher than the lowest item. So, you know, those are some of the issues. Another issue that were reported to me, and I've personally seen one where an item I was selling they were advertising in my listing for someone else's item that was the same thing but less. So, you know, that's very upsetting to see that, that you can pay to advertise on someone else's page. I don't know how that's set up. I know they're they're putting the, the advertisements in different spots now. You can see them at the bottom of a page. You can see them at the bottom of page 50. But I've been checking on these over and over and over again on the sponsored and all these advertisements and what's going on and doing a ton of searches from different stores, from different um, cleaned out, wiped out laptops so I can have a fresh look at it. Nothing tied to it. Everything cash is wiped out. History is wiped out. All my logins are gone. Everything's gone. It's just a fresh search from one, you know, I've even unconnected the laptop, you know, turned off the Wi-Fi or if it's a hardwired one in. So it's got a new Mac address and everything. You know, everything is new. There's, it can't even tie it because I'm it, my system set up here, our network, that every time you log in with the PC, it, it gives you a new Mac address. Or not a new Mac address, but a new IP address, I should say. So that's the key on, on checking this out. And, and there's something going on. I don't care what eBay says. In my honest opinion, with an IT degree, with 20-plus years on eBay, they've changed it for some reason to do something that it's not, that wouldn't be a legitimate search in my opinion to some extent. I'm not saying it's not necessarily a legitimate search, but they're skewing the results in my book to, to meet their needs. If, if you guys just checked your email today, I got an email telling you if you have issues with sales. Again, this is basically the entire email and I would have had it up here. I wished I could have. Um, but the email, literally, the last thing on there is telling you you should try promoted listings. That'll fix your sales. You'll get some more sales. you get some more views. I'm, I'm just worried that, you know, it's all, all, all of eBay is banked on getting promoted listings to go. You guys should know that because they're projecting less sales on the, on the platform. They may be projecting a 1% revenue increase, but the revenue increase is not coming from sales. That is projected to be down 2-4%. The 1% increase is coming from you, from me, from everybody else who uses promoted listings. They got, I think it was $115 million extra just the last quarter from promoted listings. That's money from us. And, you know, this is their big push. The new CEO, again, I addressed this on another video, I think in my Patreon. 
The new CEO did the um, the financials a week or so ago. They never even mentioned that there was any issues or glitches going on to Wall Street at all. They never said a single word about it, which is really troublesome with all the other aspects of their revenue report that they put out there. Again, I look at that stuff. Yeah, I may be a big nerd on it, but I make money off these platforms. I want to know what's going on. Amazon, we know, did lower their expectations, but Amazon invested billions into a one-day shipping program. They still are projecting a very good increase over last year, as well as an increase in sales, items sold, merchandise volume, and the whole works. eBay is projecting the opposite. Instead of investing a billion dollars into one-day shipping like Amazon did, eBay has taken the tax breaks they just got in the last year or so, which we didn't get, most of us, and they reinvested over a billion dollars into buying their stocks back. That's a fact. Look it up. They're pegged to invest over $4 billion into just buying their stocks and getting rid of certain levels of stocks. They, they've like nullified a couple million shares, if I read it correctly, which which means that the, sh the shares that are out there are going to increase in value so that the, the shareholders will make more money. Again, this isn't going to help you or me. This is going to help the folks on Wall Street and all of those people. When the Dow goes up, it doesn't do anything. Does anybody here, does the Dow do anything to help you guys? Does Wall Street or any of these markets do anything? I do have some stocks, so I, no way could I do anything. I'm not I'm not a big rich you know, player or anything in the stock market. I just have some stocks through years of, of being around. I don't have a fortune in them. They're small time for most people. I, I don't even really look at them. They do what they want. I've got some utility because my father-in-law worked for a power company, so we've got some. I'm not going to, you know, hide that aspect of it, but I don't make anything from my stocks. I might get some dividends out of it, but I just we do dividend reinvestment on anything, so it just goes back into it. But the point of it is the Dow means nothing to me. I mean, I understand how it works, and I know the whole market because I did cover some of that in college, but it means nothing to my pocketbook. Let's just put it that way. The S&P, again, none of these mean anything to probably most of you here. So, you know, I don't care what the bull market or what the markets are doing at all in my book. It, it doesn't affect me or the average person. It doesn't affect 90% of the population. So, yeah, the 10%, the top 10% is doing great, but everybody else here, you're, you're stagnant. There's the, the cost of living isn't keeping up with raises and all these other things. So, anyway, let's not get into politics or anything like that. Let's go see who's here. I've got some other things written down, but I just wanted to get that out of the way first a little bit. Um, yeah, there is a global downturn. Let me pop up to the top. That's Duncan up there. Hey, Penny, Scott Slusher, don't know what else to get uh, my sales boom and tried everything. Now, most everybody, too, had good sales before October, from what I see and what, I, what I've been told from all hundreds of people. And again, I've talked or heard from hundreds and hundreds of people, maybe even a thousand um, with, with the last three or so weeks since this has been going on. It's the same same thing over and over and over again. Um, even with impressions, just looking at impressions alone, it makes no sense to be down at this high of amount for many of the people I've seen. I've had people that are telling me they're sixty three percent down, fifty three percent down, thirty percent down. It, it's across the board, and these aren't people that are just new to the platform. These are people who have been on. Many of the people who've been on for 10, 20 years are telling me the exact same thing. These are people who know how to run their accounts, who know the market that they're in. And again, I'm not trying to criticize anybody at all. Don't take that as, as that. I know what I sell and I know the markets what I sell. I know the platforms that do better for certain items that I sell versus other ones. Only because I've done it so long. Again, I've done this for so long that I know that aspect of it. So I'm gonna I trust the judgment of, of some of these people who are telling me and in, in showing me and in, in expressing some of their 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 money issues and their their revenue issues from sales. And I know there's always gonna be people who have great sales and show you what their sales are. A sales somebody showing me their sales doesn't mean a lot to me at all unless they're telling me or showing me what they have into the items. I could sell hundred thousand dollars and only make fifty bucks. So again, sales does not mean anything because you got to pay for the items. My items, I, I'm running an eighty percent profit margin after fees and everything said and done. I don't pay anything hardly for my items. You see what I sell? Most people think it's junk, at least this aspect of it. Um, if on Amazon, my profit margin's totally skewed in another direction. But you know, it's volume. It's a volume thing there. So, 
it doesn't bother me, and I don't have anything to do with it. You can just mail in, well, not mail in, but you can send in stuff to FBA, and then you're done with it. You don't have to deal with it. So who cares what the profit margin is as long as you're making the money? In my book, I'm not going to go after like 2, 5, 10%. I'm trying to go for 25 or higher percentage on anything um, on Amazon. Obviously, we want 50% or higher, but, you know. Anyway, let's let's look at some more questions. Treasure experts, yes. Halloween, now I usually dress up on Halloween. Right after the show, I've got uh, some folks we are meeting for, believe it or not, a business thing tonight. Um, it was the only time I have available, so we are going to a dinner meeting with four other people that we are going to be discussing some things. I've got like 400 hours invested into some projects, and um, we're getting closer to the finishing point, and I've got some meetings to do over that. So, um I've talked about it here and there to some folks, so there's some folks that probably know know what I'm probably referring to. Uh, Dom's one of them. I don't know if he's on tonight. I know he's he's been busy as can be. Um, primetime treasure hunter, of course. Uh, let's see here. Tammy, I've tried everything, too, on sales. They're dead. It's just, uh, yeah, I won't repeat that show here on eBay right now. Now, I had somebody call eBay, and they were told that there's issues going on with these searches and sales, um, only one person has told me that, and I haven't heard it directly, so I can't confirm that the eBay is acknowledging that. They never usually acknowledge anything like that. Again, eBay is, in general, a decent site to sell on. I wouldn't say give up on eBay, so don't take that out of the conversation. The conversation is more of the issues and what to do. A wrong decision would be to jump off the platform. you know. So I, I wouldn't recommend that to anybody, because for some items, you're, you're just never going to have a perfect result on any other platform um, and on some items you have to have eBay for items you can't send in FBA eBay is your backup I can tell you right now so if you're on Amazon you know exactly what I'm talking about so anything I can't send in or I'm gated on on Amazon just goes to eBay you know that's just the, the game you play and that's I send some to Etsy or you can send some if you want like if it's crafting supplies and things like that too so just FYI let's see where we're at Cornelius how are you doing um, for those on Patreon, too, let me just shoot this out. I got a video. In fact, I think it's ready to go up. I've got a video done that will be up tonight for sure, 100%. Um, and uh, it's already done. It's already just, it was just finished compounding right now or compiling. So uh, it will upload the minute I go from uh, ending the show tonight. So I'll be on Patreon for sure. Um, one more thing here. I had some folks ask, um, here's one of my postcards. I put it at a special rate. If you want a personal hand-signed numbered limited edition card for Halloween, this is an older one. I, my new ones, I sold directly all at once. I didn't have any to sell after I sold them to somebody who purchased them locally. So this is, in fact, there's a uh, link to this spe a specific postcard for seven bucks. That includes first class shipping with tracking, just like I ship everything. It's seven bucks. No other charge, nothing. If there might be a tax, I can't control that, but I'm making like a dollar if, if that off of these at the end of the day by the time the fees and everything else comes in. So uh, it's a special for today. Now I was gonna do a giveaway. Now, if you're unaware, there's been some sites shut down over giveaways here on YouTube, and I looked into that and I was hesitant to do it without putting up specific rules and getting an okay on that. People have been uh, reporting people for running these free promos. You cannot do a giveaway to the whole, whole world. You can't do that. It's against the law. You can only do it here in the U.S. and only certain select areas. I think you can only do it to part of Canada and not Quebec as well. Um, so if, if another channel is doing that, you might tell them to look into the laws um, on that. I have done them once or twice in the past. But since that, uh, I was called out to me on that specifics, I looked into it. And sure enough... People have been shut down for doing it. You can't just give stuff away. You have to state things like uh, no purchase necessary. You have to have defined rules, defined dates, defined ways that you can state that you're going to be tracking who won and who didn't win. So I, I, I wasn't going to do that and risk anything um, getting the, the channel shut down over something stupid because there's a lot of haters in this world these days. So anyway, um, and one more thing, if you can hit the like button, if you're enjoying the conversation, we got... Heading close to 200 people on now, it looks like. Um, and uh, on my side, it's only 40 some odd likes. So if, if that's your thing, I would appreciate it. If not, I completely understand. Um, but anyway, I did honestly have a, a contest. And I will still probably do it. I'm just going to make sure that it doesn't violate anything here uh, from the state. 
Um, I did send an email there asking this from the state board uh, just to be uh, for sure. It, it goes into like a lottery law or something like that because you can't just give something away, as, as strange as that sounds. Now, I can donate something to a church or a school, but you can't give something away. Somebody could say that it wasn't fair and all these other aspects of it. So, again, I do apologize for not being able to do that. But after talking to somebody who was shut down in another site that was suspended and took a couple dings on it, I don't want to do that. It's a worse of an issue if, you know, somebody says, hey, and reports you to a state. So all those platforms that do like uh, I hit 10,000, I'm going to give something away. They got to post the rules or they could get themselves kicked off. They could get themselves into some legal trouble. Every state has different rules on that. So enough said on that. I do apologize. But again, if you if you do want this, I don't. So usually these will cost you 10 or 12 bucks um, with shipping and all. So I've knocked it down to bare bones on, on those, just FYI. And again, the link is down in the uh, description box. Uh, let's see here. The other day, Penny Day, the other day you asked about, yeah, sweatshirts and shirts. I have them done. You have to get them approved on um, Teespring. So I haven't gone back and checked. They were pending last I looked, but I'll have a video on them Um You'll see. You'll see how helpful it's something that could be helpful to your business. I should say, and I, I won't call it out because I don't want anybody just coming out and just doing the same thing. But uh, they'll be up shortly here. I promise you. It's something that I have personally used. So just keep an eye on that. Um, I'll call it out though. As I said, Penny. Happy Halloween. Hey Mary, how are you doing? Hey Aaron, welcome, welcome. Reseller King, welcome. Nancy Condon, happy Halloween back at you. Hey Karen, how are you doing? It's supposed to snow tonight, yeah. So we're not, we don't have snow yet. I don't really want to look out the window now because it's, there's, there's like four trick or treaters out there. It's been raining nonstop all day. Everything's soaked. It's probably still raining actually right now. The fog was horrendously awful this morning. Schools were delayed and closed, and this is supposed to turn into snow here tonight. It's supposed to get down into the 30 range. So, it'll be the first snow. We've had ice, but this will be the first snow up here in Ohio. Hey, Marikex Seven, how are you doing? Hey, Mike. Mike, one of my, my first person I think I've ever talked to here on YouTube from my channel. Mike's a real good guy. My, Him and um, um, Annie are probably my first two. Aaron's been a, been a uh, wrench for a while, too. Hot here in Florida, Karen says. I lived in Florida for 10 years. I honestly do not miss it anymore. Uh, I just, I don't miss the heat as much as I, I, I loved it back in the day, but I don't miss it anymore. My asthma and things like that bug me when I'm in the heat. Mogo, how are you doing? There's Duncan. How tricks. eBay really needs to make the visit shop link bigger when you view an item on Chrome. The link is hardly visible. Huh. I have not done that. Um, I don't search for much online. I already know where I get stuff at, honestly. But I was going to watch your Kiss Live show from last year, but I figured it wait for the surprise this year. Yeah, you don't see a costume here, Scott. I do apologize for that. I had 100% had intentions. Um, I actually was uh, planning on filming something to add into it, so it was going to be like a film into the live show, but uh, the weather was so, so horrid around here, I couldn't really do anything. It's been raining for like a week almost straight, and everything is soaked outside. So hopefully the roads won't be ice in the morning. Kids, school bus, and the whole works. Happy Halloween, yes, Scott. Simple Fit Life, how are you doing? Yeah, I lived in Flagler Beach for a while, and we used to go to uh, Dunedin on the west uh, Gulf Coast side. We used to stay right off of um, Alternate um, 19. Uh, hey, Rich, how are you doing? Lori Disney, welcome. Rope and reseller, how are you doing as well? Yeah, I think the power outages, as I said, have some play in sales. On a given week, you know, we have quite a considerable amount of, of California purchases. Um, I did go through and look, and I'm still selling postcards and smalls to California. I don't know how it's affecting everybody else, though, so it, it's hard to say. You know, I know there's a large chunk of the population, whether they're they're uh, in a fire zone or not, there's a lot of folks that may be worried about what's going to happen and are saving up their money till Christmas. So, again, this week is usually slow anyway. So don't be panicking over just this week. 
I've tracked, you know, sales for like almost 10 years straight, week by week on a, a spreadsheet. So I've looked over that. Literally, the week of, of Halloween for us is usually slow. Just because everybody's going to events, they're spending money on candy and kids' events. They're going to office parties and family parties, uh, school parties, all these kind of things for the kids. You know, even the grocery stores around here set up trick-or-treating days and all that stuff, you know? So there's a lot going on this week. You got the fires. You got, got the other issues going on. I know it's been going on since the 12th, so obviously there are some issues tied with eBay. I can't blame eBay for the entire issue, but obviously they're playing into this. It's just not a good time for all of this to have happened. This sort of rollout should have never happened in the fourth quarter. Anybody in their right mind listening right now or watching this video would say the same thing. Who in their right mind would roll out something this potentially dangerous right before the busiest, well, in the busiest time of the year, I should say, because we're in fourth quarter, you know? So why would somebody do that? Why on earth would anybody do that? And obviously they didn't test it. Um, if you run a network or any of those who have an IT degree and you've messed with admin and, or uh, network administration, when you go to a facility, and this is, I'm sure, some issues with eBay, you'll see computers from all different ages and eras. You might even see like um, a 10-year-old or a 15-year-old version of Windows running in a closed network. Closed meaning it doesn't have internet access. So when you're out there doing this, you'll run into systems that sometimes the the actual outer network, the the let's say the 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 inside um, systems running a 10 or 15-year-old Windows is a subnet off of the main network. A subnet is a closed off system that's its own separate entity um, from the main actual internet access. There might be a separate firewall and other technical devices. So on something like that, they could have tested it so easily. You know, it's, it's lack of testing is all I can say. And, you know, I don't know what they're doing. I, I Even the financials scare me on this aspect of it because they, they've cut money off of investing into into the business and, and expenses are down by a considerable amount. So I worry, you know, I worry what they're doing there. Do they have the staff? Do they, they? We still know there's issues. I mean, this is it's just so frustrating. Even though I don't sell clothing, it's frustrating because I get you know people questioning and asking me all kinds of stuff on this, and, and there isn't a good answer anymore. I don't I don't know what the answer is. Uh, my goal though is just ride it out. We're doing fine. If you're having those issues, at least don't jump the the bandwagon until the second week in November. See what happens in November before we we go ranting and raving about it to, to you know eBay. They can't do anything apparently. And when you call eBay, you're not talking to the people who caused the problem. You're not talking to the people who are going to fix the problem. You're talking to somebody who's told what to tell you. And again, I'm, I have no complaints about customer service at eBay, my customer service. We have basically concierge service because we've got Anchor Store and we have guaranteed U.S. support. I know everybody doesn't have that, but the, the service I get, I'm very happy with. They're very friendly and they give me the best information they have. Mind you, some of the time it's not the right information, but they're, they're working with what they were told. That's a issue with eBay not passing along specifics and informing their employees or the system that they use that they have to look up what to tell you isn't correct or isn't updated like everything else. They keep updating everything. So information that they're giving customer service may not match the information that they just put out. So, you know, I, there's just so much going on. They just don't have it together. Amazon doesn't to some extent either. So um, when you talk to conversing from one department to another, Amazon is about as bad as eBay in some aspects. Like if, if you're trying to get a exemption for a, a specific item on Amazon and you're already on gated, it, it, sometimes it's a long drawn out process on who to talk to. And even to get on gated in some categories, it's a long drawn out process. They'll send you forms and not tell you what they want or how to fill out the forms and expect you just to just to do them. And then they'll decline them. You know, it, you, you'll see that a lot if you're trying to get on Amazon. And I've, I've tried to help some folks get on gated from my Patreon into the collectibles category. And it's been a no go. So I don't know if it's totally shut down. I had one person get partially on gated in one segment of collectibles. So that's the only thing I've seen move on some of the Amazon. Now, most other Amazon items that I need to get on gated for, except like shoes or something, which I don't mess with, I can usually just, you know, hit the button, you know, uh, request it, and 
probably half the time it instantly allows me to go in. Now, the other half of the time, I'll need receipts, just like everybody else. You know, I do have wholesalers, so I have supplied receipts, and we have been on gated in items that many people wouldn't mess with. So you can get a wholesaler for almost anything. And I've given everybody out one months back, um, and I don't remember what, what month that was, but there's a toy one that I gave out, and you can get top-end toys. Again, the margins aren't super, but you can get yourself in the door that way. So again, if, if you're worried about um, business, look into other aspects, look into other platforms, check out Wholesale, check out RA as well too. So, you know, that's what I should say on that one. Hey, Kathy, how is Australia? I bet you it's nice weather. Cosmic Thrifter, hello, how are you doing? And there's Kathy, yep, Duncan and Kathy are both from Australia. Amazon Australia accidentally, I think, approved me for CDs, have applications in for collectibles. Well, wow, very good, very good. CDs is a big thing for selling on Amazon. I know so many people that can't that haven't been on gate and, and um, they'll sell them in huge lots on eBay just because they don't want to mess with nickel and dime. But I sell a lot of those individually if they're low enough ranking on on uh, Amazon for CDs. And I'll just list them if they're vintage CDs and there's some collectible ones that we get some horrendously good money for um, from them. But um, I'll list them in collectibles entertainment for the CDs or the collectibles vintage vinyl. I'll list records or I might list them in the regular vinyl too. Um, for most of Amazon, if you're unaware, there's two sections you can list CDs in. There's two sections you can list DVDs in. And there's two sections you can list CDs in. Records as well. Any of the musical ones. Anything music you can list in two ones. The collectibles um, uh, category sec section or just the music section as well. Those are both the ones. And we can use them both, honestly. Again, I, I've got, we've sent in um, um, invoices for massive amounts of DVDs and CDs, and we got on gated in their standard section. That's what it takes. you got to buy a lot. We bought 1,500 to start off with uh, religious DVDs and CDs, just FYI. That got us on gated. Uh, again, we spent some money, though, but we did sell them, so I can't complain. Winter is here as of today at Tripa 645. I probably pronounced that wrong, but anyway. Articulum 2. I really hope they have those worked out by the time it goes live for everybody. If you're talking about the pay, yeah, I hope everything goes goes well because there's going to be a lot of unhappy people. Do page picker. Millions of pennies make interest. Not sure what that is about. I agree. eBay could do better. Yes, eBay could definitely do better. I would definitely say this is a fiasco. Almost a whole month of what's going on with eBay is all these glitches and issues and stuff. And, and somebody said, you know, why don't they just roll it back? It's not, I don't see a, a viable way for them to roll this back. If they tried to even roll it back, in my opinion, what would happen if they rolled the whole thing back is they would be losing um, links to all kinds of stuff. You thought the photo issue last June was bad. You should see what happens if you try to roll some massive thing back on a database. That's why you test it in a virtual network on a private closed-in network as well. So I just can't believe that they, they let it go this way. Yeah, here's somebody else. They told me, uh, Scott, they told me nothing was wrong. Now, everybody has been told nothing was wrong. Again, from eBay's standpoint, you are talking to a representative of the customer service department. That's what they're probably told to tell you. Or they're only given so much information, and if they look at that information, what they're told to look at, and it looks like it's supposed to look like, they're just going to tell you everything looks fine. I don't blame customer service for saying that nothing's wrong with a specific store or not, because they're going by what they, they've, they've been told. Customer service is not the IT department, and you or I cannot talk to the IT department from what I've been, I've been told. And I couldn't talk to variations department and all these other people in the past. So I don't even ask anymore on certain issues. I just it just it's it's too much headache and aggravation for me. As I've said, we're we're proceeding on like you know eBay is is got issues that they don't know how to fix, and I'm broadcasting my stuff other places as well. Cross listing. I'm not pulling anything down from eBay, nor would I recommend you to do that unless you're not making any money. Your your call on that one though. So anyway, search is really becoming particular. I missed an your apostle and a title, and my listing appeared. My listing appear. 
the search results I get are just all over the place. I've searched all kinds of items, and, and sometimes I can't find an item that I know is there because I found it in another way, but as just a, a regular organic search, I almost have to have every single word of the title in my search to find it, which makes no sense. You should be able to see it if you put in the main keywords of any title. Now, again, I think this is all tied to what they were trying to do with the restructuring of the system. I don't, I don't feel that they are intentionally doing it. I, I, I was floating that way at some point because of their email that they pushed out just, just today saying that, you know, try promoted listings. It's going to fix your sales and help you get more views. You know, obviously they want money from that, and that's the only way they're going to get an increase in revenues if the promoted listings work. But I, I don't see that happening if it keeps going the way it is. There's just too many people who are having issues, you know. Anyway, let's move on from there. Times get tough. Time to get crafty. Yeah, I've we've moved out. That's why I said we had a little dip at the beginning of this month. Again, I can't necessarily relate it to specifically because cause and effect, I can't say is specifically eBay. But again, it happened around the 12th. So, you know, logically speaking, that would be part of it. You know, there wasn't a fire going on when that happened. California definitely plays into your sales. I could almost guarantee you because California is the equivalent of like half the country and buyers almost because there's a large uh, swath of the center of the country that, um, you know, the grain belts and all that, that, that may not have as many people in the States and may not have as many people that would buy stuff like that, uh, you know, off eBay in the first place. So, you know, you got to think about the biggest purchasers, the state with the most amount of purchasers has some major issues that are affecting them purchasing things. I personally, if I was worried about fires, I wouldn't be spending extra money because who knows what I would lose I might not be able to work. I might lose the food in my refrigerator. You know, I might have to vacate, you know, the area. I might lose my house. I might lose my clothing. It might take months to get insurance claims settled and stuff. So, you know, Christmas is coming up. It's a bad time all around for for, for us. It's a bad time around for the folks in California. Um, I don't know what answers there are to that either. I'm shocked that the only answer they got is to shut down the power personally. You know, I know that the wind, you know, hits trees and causes fire, but you'd think that they would be able to figure out some other way with all the money some of the electric companies make and what they charge a way to stop it from burning down forests and, you know, the whole issues that are going on. I know, you know, not too long ago, a whole town was wiped out. Many people were killed in the fire. So, you know, anyway, it's a bad, terrible situation. Thrifty Ninja, how are you doing? Yeah, here is Thrifty Ninja. So true, Don. I work in IT for my full-time job, and we test the daylights out of software and hardware changes. Again, I was talking about different hardware. eBay probably has systems that are older and weren't bought at the same time. They probably have many different systems, many different platforms that they're using. Older systems mixed with newer systems, some that maybe just run security or uh, directory services or DNS or something like that. They may have all kinds of different things that don't sync 100% up with each other that weren't an issue until maybe they rolled out this kind of stuff. Now, I know people have been um, making all these other suggestions. And again, I'll talk about this one more time because I know South Similar will give you a new item number. I've said that in probably a dozen videos over a year and a half or two years of time. I know that that is the case and that a lot of people are saying sell similar and it will help you. It will only boost you for a small time and it'll kill your watchers and it'll kill your ranking. Whether you want to rank or not, it's your call. But again, ranking these days is very important because there's so many platforms to buy things on now and that's part of the reason eBay is having some issues. But people don't know where to look for everything so they just do a chrome search a google search or a, a browser search in general i don't care what you're using even on tor for those of you who know tor it's the same same issues it's the same same thing goes on so ranking is important in my book that that's all i can say on that one ranking is important from what i do because too many people just do a search for whatever they're looking for not on a platform the, the majority, from what I saw reports, says the majority of people who are searching for an item are doing it from a browser nowadays or CC Click or some other app that's going to do it for you and show you which site has which item for the cheapest amount of money. 
you know, I, I, I'm not going to rely on just the platform. I have to have the, the pull-ins from off-site. I get quite a few sales from items that are ranked or off-platform. You can even check it again. As I said earlier, the off-platform may not be correct for the the cell phone ones. I, I don't know how that sinks into there. So that's I'm not going to swear on that one, but I know on the the desktop version, you can get a, a, a semi-good glimpse on off-site um, purchases, just FYI. And and just because you one of your items wasn't necessarily an off-site purchase, they may have come from off-site and saw somebody else's item first, but your item was cheaper, and they clicked on yours. So that will show as, an, as, a, as a site purchase versus a off-site purchase. So it's still basically an off-site purchase, in my opinion. If other people aren't, aren't using the ranking scheme to get people onto the platform, it can hurt other people that are selling similar items. Just my take on that. Again, I, I spent quite a few years with IT, and I do IT. I, I've never taken a laptop, a computer, anything in anywhere. I do it all here, everything. I have upgrade everything in my laptop, including I've swapped out a screen, I've done motherboard, in the laptops, the the towers I do all that's that's piece of cake these days. I have an A plus and all that, C plus, um, safety plus, net plus. But anyway, let's just go on here and get some more questions. It's not going to be a long show because I do have a meeting by 8:30. I have to be out the door, so just FYI. So we've got um, around 30 more minutes here. If my yeah, we got about 30 minutes again. Um, I'm I again my time has has gotten to be just horrendously uh, busy here. Uh, let me see here. Um, Articulum 2. While younger people aren't coming, maybe boomers are increasing as more retire. If the boomers are using eBay, they're using it now in my book. They're not going to wait to retire to be on eBay. They know eBay or they don't. That's That's my take on it. I don't see any big push to even get baby boomers onto the site. Um, I, I did see and hear them on the radio occasionally, but, you know, I very rarely even listen to the radio. I have XM. We have one of the little XMs, and I got that as a purchase like six or seven years ago out of Savers, and it had for three ninety nine. I think I got it for $2.99, um, and it had lifetime service, obviously, because I'm still using it for free. Um, so I don't even listen to the radio, but I, I was logging into my email, and my email had a little rotational ad for eBay, believe it or not. I was kind of surprised. Uh, let me see here. Well, thank you, Nancy. Yeah, eBay definitely has to shape up. Laurie Disney, my son hates eBay. He is 22. A lot of people have the issues with eBay that are younger. They don't reach out to younger folks. They're not as friendly or user uh, friendly, I should say, as most other platforms. Um, Amazon's a piece of cake in my book. Once you figure it all out, compared to eBay, it's a big difference. I know people complain about, you know, they booting you and stuff on Amazon, but you follow the rules, you know, you read up on the rules. Let's put it this way. Most people who get booted on Amazon haven't read all the rules or don't know how everything works and, and violated something for what I see. They they usually don't tell you why they boot you for the for the honesty. Um, now, if you're reported for something, usually you can, you can challenge it to some extent, but most of the time, uh, the people who are booted from Amazon who come to me and ask this and ask that, they did something wrong and they don't understand the platform, all the ins and outs. There's certain things you can and can't do on Amazon, totally different from eBay. Now, I've been on Amazon for a long time, so if you're in Patreon, you've seen a little bit of my inner um, Amazon pages, so you, you know for sure I'm on gated and collectibles for those in my Patreon. Yeah, I don't think I think eBay should not want to be Amazon. And, and in fact, reps on the video conference call I had with like head of seller uh, experience and several other people from head departments, they said, "Oh, we're not trying to be Amazon." And they brought up you know, twenty oh eight or uh, two thousand eight. And uh, you know, my answer to that was, "Well, we're not in two thousand eight. I don't care what happened in two thousand eight. That means nothing." I don't care about the comparisons. The comparisons I care about are, are the fact that they're steering themselves more and more towards a Amazon-ish platform. You know, Ruby Lane, let, let's talk about another platform. And I get a lot of people asking talking about another platform. Ruby Lane costs more to list and costs more to do things. But, but a draw on Ruby Lane is if you sell the right things, people will go to that platform and buy them from you at, at a greater cost than even some on eBay. 
So even smaller sites can have a draw to them. eBay doesn't have that draw anymore. They don't they, they don't know what they want to be. I mean, they were so great when it was just a swapper garage sale for odd and cool items. You know, if you wanted to find something cool back in the day, you went to eBay. Everybody went to eBay. But now, you know, a 22-year-old how many options is a 22 year old? How many friends do they have? I bought this on Poshmark, offer up or whatever, whatever you're using. People are even telling other other kids, hey, do you want to get rid of your old books? Do this. You want to get rid of your old, you know, clothing? Do this. You know, they they don't they're not hearing eBay. They don't have any eBay thing going on. They don't have any reach out to colleges or schools or, or anything like that. Amazon does, though, to some extent, because you can rent college books from Amazon. We used to do Chegs, for those of you who know what Chegs is, and I've sold and we've made thousands and thousands of dollars on Chegs, but Amazon is now competed and we, we get stuff from Amazon instead, or now sell them on Amazon instead as well. Not everything, there's a few things Chegg is still good for, C-H-E-G-G, -G, if you don't know what Chegg is. Um, you know, my son rents his books from, from Amazon usually because they're cheaper. And the return and all the other aspects of it are better than Chegg for the most part. You know, I'm not saying you can't make money on Chegg, but that's just another one for those into school and textbooks. We get hundreds of text or hundreds of dollars worth of free textbooks every year from the university too, which I've called out. So if you don't know how to do that, you're missing out a little bit there. Let me pop down here and get to some more questions. When you cross list, do you use a third party app or do you log into each site individually to list them? I use a third party app. We've we cross listed originally thousands of items by hand. We'd open up three windows and we would do three sites. Specifically, I could do records, I could do eBay, Amazon, and Discogs all at the very same time. So I'd use eBay to alter the images, I'd download a copy of the corrected images, and then I'd upload them to the other two sites, and then I'd just copy and paste all the other information and alter whatever I needed to to the various specific sites. So I'd have to change a few things category-wise for Discogs, I'd have to change a few things category-wise for Amazon versus eBay. So now what you do with a third-party app, you create everything in the third-party app. You can do some with Shopify and stuff and, and push out. When you use a third-party app, your your sites that you are on are called channels. So if I'm technically would be called I'm on nine different channels as opposed to nine different sites. It's the same thing, but they're called channels. So if you create a listing in, say, Cellbrite or Ecom Dash, you can then broadcast it out from the third-party app to the other platforms that are included in that third party. Now, some of those third-party apps have different platforms that they can sync with, so you better check it out beforehand. I, I can tell you, though, that you're going to have some aggravations with third-party apps. It is not the third-party app's fault. I don't blame anybody at the third party. The issue is getting software or, or the, the app to, to, to be able to understand the difference between an eBay category and an Amazon category. That is the drawback on a third-party app. Some of the folks that are crushing it on using Cellbrite, for example, one of the, the persons that I've talked to spent almost a year to get his store in line to use Cellbrite effectively. Since then, though, and this is two or three years ago he did this, it's been a, a walk in the park for him. Once it's set up, you never go to the specific site, so you're just doing it, as I said, on the third-party app. You type everything in there. It's one screen, and off you go. And it, you already know how it syncs from one app to the other, from one channel to the other. So you know what to do right off the bat. So it's not an issue. You train your employees the same way. You, you show them how to do it. You list everything from the third-party app, and you move forward. That's how you move forward. With a third-party app, as long as you started the listing from the third-party app, it will take down whatever sells. So if I sell a record on Amazon... The third-party app will take it down from Etsy and um, eBay at, this, at the immediate time. It'll sync those all up. That is the benefit. In the past, we had to manually take down a listing from two and three sites if it's sold on one platform because we weren't using a third-party app. And that can be very confusing and very hard to keep track on what's going on. It can add a lot of time to your business if you do that for every item you own because then you're going to go to, at the end of every day or whenever you want to do it, you're going to go in and, and have to manually pull these things down. Again, a third-party app will cost you. 
one we spend 120 on and another one will be out of the free period will be um i think it's like uh 86 dollars or something like that ecom dash was giving out a special so i i took the freebie while the special was still going on so if i decide to keep it i can roll into the special rate through i think for a year or some certain time frame ecom dash and Subrite are the two that i personally would look into if I was you, because most most of these third-party apps charge you by how many listings total you have. Cellbrite and Ecom Dash only charge you by how many you sold. So for me, let's say 70,000 listings I have, I would be spending 1,500 plus just to have those listings handled by a third-party app that does it by listing total. Now, Ecom Dash or Cellbrite, it, it goes by how many I sell. If you sell over 500, though, your, your price will go up, which is our, ours has. So those are monthly totals. So th that's the breakdown on third-party apps. They, they all don't handle every platform. So, you know, that's the drawback. Now, I do have some secondary sites that we use that I don't need a third-party app because the secondary site will automatically sync with eBay. The HIP platform, for example, HIP, they have three different sites and they all sync with eBay directly. Now, you can't list anything from the from that from HIP platform that will sync. You have to list it on eBay, and then it'll automatically sync everything in those specific categories you use. And we do use that platform. I have shown others how to use the platform in my Patreon group, and um, I've had a fairly good response from the folks who have used it. They did get an increase. The day they transferred their listings, they got enough to pay for several months' worth of service, and they made a few bucks on top of it. So, you know, you're not going to make a fortune on all these other, other platforms, but it all adds up. That's the point. If you're only selling so many items on eBay, and you can boost your weekly sales by even 20 or 30 bucks, at the end of the year, that's over a thousand dollars. So you do that with two or three or four platforms, you're adding on to your income. Again, there's listing fees for every other platform. If you're on Amazon and you already have the business account, it doesn't cost you a dime more. Etsy is, I think, what is it? Um, oh, geez, I think it's twenty cents for four months is what it is. So it's about the exact same price as having an anchor store for the five cents over your first ten thousand listings. So um, just take that in consideration. It's a five cent per month for four months paid in advance, basically with Etsy, if you haven't done Etsy before. And Etsy uses the same payment system that eBay is transitioning to without issues, mind you. They don't have the issues that eBay seems to have. Um, and one other aspect too, which, which I think I may have talked about, I saw on all these other platforms and my sales on the other platforms aren't dead like a lot of people's issues with with ebay and again with ebay when i took a little dive at the beginning of this month my other platforms did not take any dive so i have to wonder if it's tied to ebay personally maybe not but you know i'm 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 honestly on that fence right there again we fixed our sales we did some things i recommended auctions if you haven't done any auctions try the auctions because none of these issues seem to be tied up with auctions and I've tested it on our other store for, well, a couple of weeks, let's just say. So, And I know other people have tested it and said the same thing. They're running auctions without issue. So look at it that way, too. Auctions rank differently from what I understand in what I have seen on eBay. Again, some items aren't good to sell in auction. You have to set them higher than than you know a, you know than you normally would because if only one person bids on your item, it's only selling for your opening bid. So you got to be cautious on auctions. Don't put it less any auction item. You're, if you plan on doing that route, don't put it any less than you would want to take. So if the bottom line you'd take for an item is twenty five bucks, you start it off at twenty five bucks. Don't play games with the auction. It's going to go or it's not going to go. That's my take on it. I can play the games, the the pricing pricing um, back and forth as a bin, but I can't play it as an auction. It's not going to work. Just FYI. Uh, Aaron, it appears the majority of my items are selling through promoted listings, increasing eBay's profits up to 7% or more. See, that's the point. And even if you originally started promoted listings and you got out of the promoted listings for 30 days, even if a specific item was never promoted, you entered into the promoted listing, you still have to pay. eBay doesn't even guarantee you your promoted listing will be promoted. Keep that in mind. That even if even if they did guarantee it, I was personally told by eBay on a voice, voice or a video conference call, even if um, it's only promoted for a two-minute ordeal for the entire month, 
and it sells anytime, it's going to be billed for that promoted listing fee, no matter what. Just FYI. You take it how you want with that, but I'm not touching promoted listings, even if it would hurt my sales. If it's going to hurt my sales in, a, in an area, I'm just going to pull those items somewhere else. I'm not going to mess with eBay's little games anymore. My book. Again, we'll see what happens if a CEO comes in. If the new CEO does not have an IT history or background, my faith in eBay is, is not going to be there much longer at that point because they need somebody who understands how it works. The last CEO hadn't a clue on any of that. I bet she has never even sold a single item or understood how it actually was to list an item on the site. I would not be surprised at all. Opinion, I don't know for fact, but that's my honest opinion. Let me go. Galaxy 5000. I think I'm going to block my um, my first buyer. I accept offers on items he doesn't pay. After nine days, he has me bundle them all, then doesn't pay and is making offers on the same items again. Yeah, I had somebody make an offer on like 12 items. I He accepted them, or he made the offer. I accepted them. Then I never heard another word. Then I opened up cases. and In, in fact, since I I build them together for shipping. eBay would only allow me to open up a case in the very first one. I couldn't open up cases in all of them at the same time. So I opened up the case in the first one for unpaid item. Never heard a word from him. And the case closed. And then as soon as that first one closed, it allowed me to do cases in all the other ones. So once he saw I opened up all the other cases, then he said, hey, I, PayPal's having an issue. If you send me your PayPal address, which you can't send addresses, that can get you booted. Um which I knew it was a scam at that point. He said it was PayPal, and they told him to come to me and ask for my PayPal address, and he'd send it directly. Don't ever do that. That's a, it's a scam of some sort. So after all this, he got the dings for you know 12 items. Uh, I got them relisted. I got my fees back. eBay took care of it. Three days later, somebody made offers from a totally different uh, login on the exact same items. You know, So it, again, it was another one of these scammers. Um, in both of these accounts were similar in nature to naming scheme, and both of them have been around for six or so months. So eBay shut them both down. I did go back and look, so they've both been shut down. Um, because I did call and I reported it, and eBay did confirm that they were both the same person. eBay can tell you and will tell you if you've got two, two accounts that are the same person trying to do business with you. So I would block that person if they haven't paid and haven't contacted you for nine days, I would definitely block them, Galaxy 5000. I would stop them from being able to do any more offers until they settle with that. They didn't request it. They didn't tell you. After seven days, I open a case no matter what, usually, unless I have a prior deal worked out with them. So take it at that. Um, we've got 210 people watching right now. Um, I got 93 likes. If you like it, please hit that like button there down below for us. It does help the, the metrics here on YouTube. It helps our channel a little bit here. Um, yeah, that's what I would do, Galaxy. I would block them from bidding on any more items. I would open up cases on everything and then just go from there. Well, thank you. Uh, Dino, Dino, however you'd like to pronounce it. Yeah, I'm selling okay. I have no problems with the selling. I did have to do things that I would never do this time of year. I don't usually do discounts only on certain items just before the holidays. Everything else just sits at the normal price. I don't do usually offers to watchers. I very rarely did them. In fact, I did all like a thousand plus, like 1700 or something one day, and I, I screwed myself because we sold a lot. I sold hundred. Hundreds of uh, items. I mean, and I do mean a lot of items. And I, I was up to like three in the morning wrapping stuff up. I know it's money, but it, it killed like two days of my life doing that. Um, and I would have rather just staggered out the money. I didn't need it. I was just trying to see what would happen. And I, I screwed myself on that one. That was one of my mistakes. So, yeah, there's still a lot of issues. I, 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 can't, I can't stress enough that the issues are there. Again, things to try. Do the markdowns. Do your own marked sales and markdown. Do that. And that's on the marketing tab. That is not a promoted listing. That's your own in-store promotion. And it's like a sales and markdown. I use those all the time. And it'll literally say like items on sale. And it'll show how much percentage off to all your watchers and all your buyers. I throw a lot of prices out there, you know, from just prices from, you know, other items similar but not the same items. So some of my prices are high and I know that. I don't worry about that as much. So I can play around all the time with uh, markdowns and sales. And when you do the markdowns and sales, it gives you an option to send 
listings to anybody following your store. It'll show them that your items are on sale. And usually when I do that, I'll get a bunch of sales right off the bat. Now, I know other people complain and say these are just people waiting for your items to be marked down so they can buy them and turn on and resell them. If I'm making a good profit, I don't really care what somebody else does with my items. It doesn't mean anything to me. I'm selling. I'm happy. I, I turn around and we just flip some clothing to somebody else just for a few bucks extra just because I don't want to mess with it. And I still make some money. I don't care if somebody makes money off my items. I make money off other people's items. It's a chain thing here. Who cares if I miss something that's on me? You know, I'm pretty good on what I sell and I know my stuff and I know my prices. So I don't worry about the, the, the supposed watchers trying to snake your items out and then turn around and resell them themselves. If they want to do it, fine. Especially if it's something that's been up for a year or so. Who cares? I would sell it. It's it's getting merchandise going and selling. It's it's not it's not a concern. Just like the sell through rate. You know, I still get those folks who ask, your sell-through rate's awful and all this other comments and stuff. I don't care what my sell-through rate is. You know, the items that I have are so unique for the most part, like 90%, even to toys. Even the toys that have more quantity are still fairly unique toys to find, marks or whatever you're selling. So a sell-through rate for me isn't important. The only thing I worry about in a sell-through rate is a category-specific sell-through rate. That's the only thing that really matters to me. So I know if a category is good or a category bad to, to mess with in the first place. So you know, that's just some of the things you got to look into. Again, I've done this for so long. I could I could do eBay in my sleep. You know, and I, I'm a touch typer. I don't look when I type usually. So I'm pretty quick on that and stuff. So anything you can do to save yourself time and stuff. I probably could do it in my sleep, believe it or not. But anyway, again, if, if you're interested in Halloween and I do get questions asked, this postcard, there's a link to it now. You can buy it. $7 shipped. It's signed. It's a limited quantity of 100 It's my own artwork I did. Again, I'm not trying to glorify myself. I've had many people ask about this. Usually you'll pay $7.99 plus shipping. I'm making like a dollar after all fees and said and done. This will be sent out first class shipping with tracking included, just like every single item I, I sell. I got to pay eBay fees on it as well. So, you know, almost half of the cost of me sending this to you is going to be in shipping. So plus then you got fees, time for listing and all that. So I'm not trying to make any profit. If you call a dollar or so profit, well, I guess I am making a profit, but I'm just offering for those who may be interested in doing that. So Anyway, don't have to buy it. doesn't offend me at all. I sell enough of my postcards anyway. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, a lot of people don't, a lot of the younger folks don't mess with eBay. They just don't, don't, it's, they think it's just for selling collectibles and stuff. They don't, they, they don't get it because it's not explained. They don't, nobody shows them anything. You know, if you want to go buy a video game, people go to Amazon, you know, or they'll go to GameStop. You know, or swap them out at GameStop. Now, I buy usually buy the games so that my kids can go around and resell them. Once in a while, my kid's on the PlayStation Network. Once in a while, he'll just buy something offline or we'll give him some money for friends coming over and they'll get a game or something together. But I have never had a problem buying on eBay, only on Amazon. Now, on eBay, every year I buy Christmas gifts for my kids on eBay. Because my kids don't mind if certain things are used. They don't. They like vintage and collectible stuff too. So I buy them stuff like that. And every year we've been taken at least once. This year, the 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 person I bought something for my son, and I can't mention it obviously, but the 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 photo was the photos were original were photos of the item, but the way they they pictured it, it it was very deceiving and um, I had to send it back the first thing and then after I sent it back because it was misrepresented they admitted in the return that they were sorry and they realized what they did when they saw it come back to them because I, I got it and within 20 minutes of, of um, opening the packaging it being delivered because I met them at the door I already had it rewrapped and ready to go back in the mail and the, and the slip back on it so you know I'm 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 up on the ball and stuff like that. Um, but the person tried to ding me and, and wanted me to pay for return shipping. So again, um, eBay closed the case in their favor. So I just went back in and filed a grievance and called eBay. And then eBay refunded me for the entire purchase, including shipping. Because again, they admitted that they messed up on it. So always try to get a person to admit whether they, they know what they're admitting to or not. I'm not trying to say deceive anybody, but your best bet to fight anything is to get them to admit something that they're doing is wrong and then you're set automatically just fyi my gen teenagers like fast and uh, predictable shipping ebay is not predictable they also want cheap and new the only thing they go to ebay for is used i can't see that hang on 
used phones. A perfect example. Uh, Rope and Reseller does have a channel too. I've watched a few of her videos as well. I just don't have time to watch them. So if you get a chance, you might check her out too. She's got an interesting cowboy theme to it. Um, as far as a bar, I've been screwed a few times on Amazon. On Amazon, I have never been screwed because if you call Amazon and open up, even if you just do the chat, every single time I have an issue with a seller on Amazon, Amazon has fixed it. I have zero that they didn't handle in my the way I wanted it to be handled. Um, I'm going to have to let everybody go in just a couple more minutes here because we're going to have to make it somewhere in just about 10. So I know I'm trying to get through the questions here, so I do apologize. Yeah, eBay should outreach to the kids. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, radio marketing to anybody younger is not going to work. Most kids have MP3 or they'll have their iPhone or phone or some other form. Even I don't use a phone or I use a radio. I have XM on almost always. Um, you know, that's just me. I, I've been XM since forever. I had I had them in a car that works supplied for me. And, you know, we've got a couple XM radios around here. I sell them on eBay, so I've kept them when I find some good ones. Uh, let's see here. I do vintage, so kids buys a ton. I finally saw an eBay ad during football the other night. There are a few, but it's just so few and far between. If I'm not mistaken, they cut down advertising. I could be wrong on that one. I'm going to have to double check that. Hey, Black Crystal Dice, how are you doing this evening? Action Jackson, good name there. Yeah, a, a go green, that would be a good start. You're 100% right on that one. They don't have anybody up there to reach out. All the people they have working are just either out of college or stuff. And you've got people running departments at eBay that don't even have a clue what ranking is. The people that I talked to even that didn't have a clue what ranking was, which is dumbfounded that you wouldn't know why you'd want to rank something. Well, we're going to have to cut it off, I says, in a minute here. Start using third-party lister. Yeah, I'm not going to say anybody should or shouldn't do it. You're going to have to look into third-party apps on your own. Before anybody does a third-party app, what you got to do 100% is check your entire store out. Make sure your pictures are good. Make sure your items are good. Make sure your titles are good. Make sure your return policy is good. If you don't have a return policy at Christmas, you're not going to sell a lot of items. And I know people say return policy means nothing. Have a return policy because even if you say no returns and the item isn't as described or the person says it's not as described, you can be, not can be, you will be forced to take it back unless they admit to some impropriety before it gets to that point. I've had a few cases where I didn't have to take something back because of a statement that the person made. So just FYI, if they alter the item, like let's say you have a brand new item you sent somebody and they opened it up and now are saying, hey, it's not what I wanted, I don't have to take that back because eBay says you have to return it in the same condition. And I haven't had to refund uh, several folks for that exact same reason. So keep that in mind on this. Know how it works and you will do far better on eBay. Joni Campbell, why do you not people? I'm not sure what that. Just ask. I find your info interesting. Larry, how are you doing, Larry? Finally off work. Yeah, my work, I, I don't end my work. I'm up all the time working. But I love what I do. It's not work, I should say. eBay isn't work in my book. Uh, let's see here. Green is whack. eBay needs to return to its roots. Yes, that's for sure. I search gas can and a ton of nozzles, gaskets, etc. appear. Only two gaskets. I wouldn't doubt that. Now, there's some regulations on gas cans, so just you have to be careful on. There might be a reason on gaskets. I might try to search for something a little more generalized because I think California has a separate ruling on what the gas can can or can't be. So there may be something eBay has a ban. I don't know. I'd, I'd have to look into that one too. Gas cans may not be a fair judge on that. The stun law. Hi, Don. Well, hi, good evening. I'm going to have to let everybody go here. I do apologize. Um, I'm doing the best I can on time. Let me just get one more. Hey, Brahma, how are you doing? 
Again, there will be a Patreon video for you folks. And Brahma, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I have a Bolo video for Christmas, fourth quarter, hottest items in the Christmas category on Patreon. It will be up tonight. It's a two-parter. It is just over an hour total for the two videos. So I didn't want to put a real long video up because of, of issues. Obviously, a live show is different. It, it's a, more of a hassle to upload and um, uh, compile anyway. auctions and then start on a certain amount if you're doing the auctions don't put the starting bid less than you would take for the item that's just a no-brainer on that one here so i'm gonna have to let everybody go i do apologize again if you haven't hit the like button please hit the like button right now i have uh right over 200 206 207 people on again if you enjoyed the video or the conversation today please hit the like button this is how I feel. These are my personal takes on what's going on. Again, I've done this for a very long time, not trying to brag. It's just I've always done eBay since eBay was eBay. It's saved our butts so many times that I'm, I'm saddened and honestly saddened by what's going on. The old days of just selling on eBay are gone for us, unfortunately. The thrill of just being on eBay is, is semi-gone because, you know, some other sites are more exciting nowadays and I, I, I have better profit margins, but anyway. So, again, I do appreciate everybody coming on. If you didn't hit the like button, hit that like button down below. I will try to get back to the video I put up yesterday and answer some of those comments there, too. So if you haven't seen the video, I do discuss some folks who are having some dire situations with this, including those who have taken out loans. So was wasn't thought of until all these folks started hitting me up with these comments. But, again, I thank you all and hope you all have a good night tonight. So happy Halloween.